Welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Boise, Idaho on this Sunday, November 21st, 2021. Today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church year. After this, we start looking forward to a whole new year. <clears throat> we spend four weeks of Advent preparing for the coming of Christ, four weeks of promise and joy as we look forward to the gift of Christmas and a whole new beginning. But first, we stop to celebrate Christ the King. Christ as ruler of all, Lord of the universe, master of creation, and above all, the one who reigns in our hearts and in our lives. But today, Jesus is in trouble. Pilate holds Jesus' life in the balance. Jesus is on trial because they say he claimed to be a king. And oddly, Neither Jesus nor God on high seems to care. Jesus all but tells Pilate to take a hike, and God, seated on high, seems to be putting his feet up while Jesus' life is in the balance, as God so often seems to do. While we struggle with fire and chaos and conflict and virus, the world going to hell in a handbasket, the one who is and who was and is to come, cool as a cucumber. God plays with us. And sometimes it can seem like that, doesn't it? Like God is indifferent to our trouble? Like God doesn't care? Like God is not at work among us? It could seem like God's indifference, or it could seem like God's absolute almighty confidence. My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus says. You have no idea what this awesome God is doing right under your nose. But if you could see it, Pilate, you would tremble or worship. Let's begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love to welcome those you send, to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Revelation, the first chapter. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. with might He has girded Himself with power He has girded Himself with power The Gospel for Christ the King Sunday is from John, the 18th chapter. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. 
Pilate asked him, what is truth? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. What is truth? And what in the world is so important about it that Jesus would die for the truth? Barbara Brown Taylor says she was at a retreat once where the leader was asked, asked them to think of someone who represented Christ in their lives. Who in your life has been the most like Jesus for you? Taylor says that when it came to share our answers, one woman stood up and said, I had to think hard on that one. I kept thinking, who is it who has told me the truth about myself so clearly that I wanted to kill him for it? Pilate is trying to decide, does he want to kill Jesus or not? Is it worth the bother? Is he bother enough for Pilate? Has he stirred up enough trouble in the kingdom to make it worth his while to kill him and to be done with him? I came into the world to testify for the, to the truth, Jesus says. And Pilate's answer is cynical or deadly serious. You decide. What is truth? What in the world is so important that Jesus would die for it? Pilate was an interesting guy, or not. That's not exactly true. What makes him interesting to us is that he was so uninteresting, he was just another backwater politician, really. He was known to be gruff, difficult to get along with, rather a bully, frankly. He was sort of a bottom rung nobility in the Roman Empire, important, but not that important. A member of the equestrian order, a sort of Roman knight, he was prefect or governor of Palestine, which was pretty much the boondocks of the Roman Empire, definitely not a coveted assignment. It meant that he could command a few military forces in order to keep the peace in a corner of the kingdom that the emperor, emperor would rather ignore. His job, in other words, was to make sure nothing was happening. As long as he had nothing much to report, as long as he wasn't putting more files on the emperor's desk, everything would be fine. And most of the time, he tried to stay out, of the, stay out in the countryside. That's what local officials like that petty King Herod were for. Pilate had a nice, more or less palatial praetorium in the lovely seaside city of Caesarea, far from the dust of Palestine. But local festivals like Passover were a problem. People tended to get excited at festivals. They poured into the city of Jerusalem from all over the place, crowds of people looking for something to do, and there's always a few radicals and troublemakers out of, um, among them to get them all worked up. So on festivals, Pilate moved into temporary headquarters in Jerusalem, where he could keep a handle on things and squash uprisings before they could get out of hand. His solution was basically move to Jerusalem and be the biggest bully in town. He was cocky and tough that way, and the people knew it. That was his weakness. Now some local leaders are throwing their weight around, not making much trouble themselves, just accusing some itinerant preacher, some prophet, of causing trouble. Jesus wasn't any trouble to Pilate, but Jesus had a way of telling the truth that could make you uncomfortable and that could make you want to kill him if it was you he was talking about. And lately, Jesus had been talking about these local leaders. Pilate didn't like trouble. That was his weakness. So if these local leaders could get Pilate to believe that Jesus was trouble, then Pilate might just take care of Jesus for them once and for all. It seems from the Gospels that Pilate smells a rat. He's starting to feel used and manipulated, which always makes a ruler dangerous. So it seems that Pilate is willing to give Jesus a chance, let him defend himself. 
But it almost seems to be on Jesus' side here, trying to give him a way out, give Pilate a reason to just blow the whole thing off. And you want to say, take it, Jesus. Take it, why don't you? He's given it to you on a platter. Deny the charges. Walk away. Forget this whole thing. Don't just stand there like some religious wimp. Fight, Jesus. Fight. Show some fortitude, a little dignity. Stand up for yourself. You've got followers. Call them up. Make them fight. Show some lethal force. Defend yourself. Don't let them push you around like this. If you're the son of God, do something. Either deny that you ever said you wanted to be king or prove that you're a bigger king than Pilate is. See, it's that king thing that's got Pilate so bothered. He'd dismiss the whole matter and kick Jesus back out on the street if it wasn't for that charge. The local leaders said he claimed to be the king of the Jews. So, Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? That would finally be the one charge with enough weight to give the Romans an excuse to crucify him. If he goes back out on the streets, claims he's a king, claims he's independent, doesn't have to answer to Rome, and can get other people to start thinking the same way, well, then that would be trouble. So answer the question, Jesus. Just tell him it's a religious metaphor, a spiritual thing. You never meant for people to take it literally. You never meant for people to start acting like God really was more important than the emperor or the economy or the election or Monday night football or Black Friday. My kingdom, Jesus says, is not of this world. Well, that's really no answer. I'm not a threat to you or anyone else, Pilate, but then you're not a threat to me either. Which means you're important, but not that important. You're powerful, but power isn't that important. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And so fighting really isn't that important. Now, what kind of a king is that who doesn't believe in fighting? If Jesus is king, he's a mad king. He's Pathetic, really. Letting himself be crucified, humiliated? Only a weak leader would do that. A strong leader would have seen it coming and would have been ready for anything, would have been ready for Pilate. Pilate knows how to use power to his advantage. Jesus uses power to serve others. Pilate knows when to, sh to use a show of force. Jesus knows when to show mercy. Pilate relies on his strength and lords it over the weak. Jesus chooses weakness. Jesus is gentle with the lowly and relies on God. Pilate wields a, a sword. Jesus puts away the sword and dies for the truth. And the truth is, there is nothing more powerful than the lowliness of mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. And the truth about ourselves is that we are sinners, every stinking one of us, no less and no more than any, than, than any other, that no one is righteous, no, not one of us. And the truth is you may not be able to accept that about yourself, but God knows it's true. And still, God accepts you with no ifs. No, if you mend your ways, no, if not, if now, if, if now that you know better, you behave better, know if, you, if you're really, truly sorry, God just chooses to accept you as you are, thinks even now that you, your own naked, defenseless you, is worthy of love and honor and respect. And the truth is, the truth Jesus came in the world to make clear to us. The truth Jesus tells us so clearly you might want to kill him if, if it wasn't also for the thing, the thing that gave you the greatest hope, wasn't also the thing that gives you life. The truth is the only way God could save this world, if not change it, was to love the world in spite of itself. So Pilate is trying to decide should he kill Jesus or not? 
Is Jesus really worth the bother? Jesus' life is on the line, but instead of defending himself, Jesus makes Pilate an offer that is out of this world. You say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. When the defendant is making offers and promising the world, it's hard to tell who's on trial anymore. Is it Jesus? Or is it Pilate? Or is it us? Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is your chance. You could belong to something more than the worries and frustrations and petty concerns of your life. You could belong to something more than this little corner of life you've carved out as your kingdom. You could belong to something bigger than you. This is not all there is. This way of living is not the only choice. There's another way. Let your weakness lead you to mercy. Let your humility lead you to gentleness. Let the truth about yourself lead you to the acceptance of others. And the only important thing is to love God, love your neighbor, and by the grace of God, even come to love yourself. Truth is, God found a way to love you, even found a way to love someone the likes of Pilate. Truth is, God found a way to love this whole stinking world so that he would give his only son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And the out-of-the-world invitation is for you to love it too. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent Son Jesus to testify to the truth. We give you thanks for our sisters and brothers in Lutheran churches throughout the world who accompany us in our mission to proclaim your grace. And we pray for their preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son Jesus to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. Protect the children and all who suffer when nations make war. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others in our community, especially nurses, doctors, chaplains, and all who work in health care settings. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to bring salvation in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives has given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, giving thanks to Christ, who comes to us in this holy meal. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise you, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. When the psalmist cried out for healing, full of compassion, you granted the people life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted your, the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, O God, with this cup and with this bread, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send your spirit upon this meal. Feed us with yourself. Unite our hearts and minds in you. Transform us with hope. Your cross is a tree of life for the healing of the nations. Grant us such life and accept our blessing, praise, and thanks, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Gathered and scattered in our homes, though we may be, at this meal today we come together as one church, united with the church of every time and place. If you have been able to gather bread and wine, or if you have but bread or wine alone, please share it now with those gathered with you, or share it yourself with me. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. In the book of Revelation, John of Patmos writes that with sometimes terrifying imagery of that day of Jesus Christ. But we never seem to realize that he's not writing about the end of all things, but the beginning of all things, the completion of all that is and was and the birth of the awesome new thing that love is already doing among us. God is not sitting back and putting his feet up God is at work in this world. When what we, what we celebrate on Christ the King Sunday is that God thinks this old weary world is worth working on. And if God thinks your life, your world, is worth working on, then what are you doing? Don't know about you, but if God seems, wants to play, then I want to play. If God's working on something, that's where I want to be. I'm, I want to work on it too. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in grace and peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Hello. I am Mary Riedel, the Child and Youth Ministry Leader here at Emmanuel. And if you've been in a church building recently, you may have seen this and wondered what in the world it was. Believe it or not, it's already time for the ELCA Youth Gathering again. We have seven kids already signed up to go, and we need to pay for their registration. And we are really late to get started on the fundraising. We're going to need a little over $3,000 to fully register everybody that wants to go. And we haven't even talked about planes, trains, automobiles, hotels, or food. And don't worry, we'll be asking for money to do that later next year. One goal I have is that no parent should ever have to tell their child that they cannot participate in an event like this because of finances. And that's why we're asking for your help. You can donate to this online using our normal Vanco giving. Using this QR code, you'll go right there. Or you can take one of these envelopes, put the offering amount in it, and put it in the offering plate. Don't forget to take your thank you card out. But what is the youth gathering? What am I even talking about? We have a three-year mission cycle here. One year we give back to a ministry that we love, like Luther Heights. The next year we give out, serving a community outside of our congregation and ministry partners. This summer we served several organizations in Boise, like the Community Schools, Baby Steps, and the Agency for New Americans. And every third year, we have our ELCA Youth Gathering. And that's a time when all the congregations get together to see and worship and learn together. This is a time for us to fill up our spiritual cup, leaning on each other for strength and wisdom. 
Our youth will be with youth from all over the world, learn that they're not the only Lutherans out there, and maybe figure out a little bit more about what it's like to live a life of faith together. And I know you're probably wondering about COVID protocols. We are requiring that everyone be vaccinated before they travel, and the youth gathering staff is working hard to minimize the risk to everyone. It's been a rough year for all of us, and our kids are not an exception. It will be wonderful to be able to do something that seems normal after nearly two years of disappointment, canceled plans, and isolation. So if you're able to only give $1, $2, that's, that's great. We have envelopes for $5 all the way up to whatever um, you can afford. I know the kids are going to appreciate it. They're going to have a great time, and they're going to come back and be able to tell you all of the things that they learned about themselves, about God, and about our church. Right